you fight for us and we bless you for that now this morning we ask that you will fall afresh in this house you tell us wherever two or three are gathered but we are here recognizing that you we are not here waiting on you you are already here and we celebrate the fact that as we are in your presence you deserve the glory you deserve the honor and you deserve the praise not because we brought you here but because you are God and you are here by yourself we bless you God now have your way in this worship service let your anointing fall let us leave this place a whole lot better than the way we have come and may we forever remember to give you the glory may we forever remember to give you the honor may we forever remember to give you the praise because you are deserving of it because you are worthy of it and because you remain the same yesterday today and forever may we give you a fresh praise this morning like we've never praised you before and let heaven come down and join us here on earth let us experience miracles signs and wonders in this land and let us give you the glory as you do it we bless your name tonight and we give you praise in Jesus name that all God's people shout hallelujah shout hallelujah shout hallelujah come on put your hands together we're gonna praise the Lord this morning he is the Alpha and Omega he is the beginning and the end and we're gonna celebrate him this morning we're gonna lift his name high because he is worthy of our hallelujah He's worthy of our praise. Whatever I say, you say. So I'm going to say and you repeat after me, all right? Come on, here we go. You are Alpha and Omega. You are, that's it. You're the beginning and the end. I hear you. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Say, I praise your name. I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the beginning and you got it. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let me hear you say, I praise your name. I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, let me hear you say, I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Say hallelujah. Holy, holy. You are worthy of my praise. Say hallelujah, holy, holy, Lord, you are worthy of our praise. Say hallelujah, holy, holy, you are worthy of my praise. Come on, put your hands together on it real good. We're going to be one, one more time from the top. Now you got it real good. Let's make one mighty chorus to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. Is that all right, church? Is he worthy of your praise? Is he worthy of your hallelujahs? Come on, let's take it back to the top and let's raise this to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Repeat after me. Come on, let's say. Say you are Alpha and Omega. Say. You got it. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, let me hear you. Say, I praise your name. I praise your name. You are Alpha and Omega. Say, come on, let me hear you. You're the beginning and the end. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, let's take it out. Say, I praise, I praise your name. I praise. Say hallelujah, holy, holy, Lord, you are worthy of my praise. Say hallelujah, holy, holy, Lord, you are worthy of my praise. Say hallelujah, holy, holy, let's take it out. You are worthy of my praise. Say this, we say hallelujah, hallelujah. You got it. 
Somebody say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. That's it. Come on. Say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Now repeat after me. Say I praise Your name. I praise Your name. Say Halle, Halle, Halle. Lift your hands to Him and say it. We say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Come on, I need to hear you. Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. I got it. Come on. Say I praise, I praise Your name, Your name. I praise Your name. We say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Come on to the King of Kings. Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. To the Lord of all. Say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. One more time. Let's bring the music. I praise Your name. I praise your name. We say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Come on, you sound good. Say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Mighty good this morning. Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. Come on, say I praise your name. I praise your name. Hallelujah. Holy, holy. Lord, you are worthy. Of my praise, say hallelujah, holy, holy, God, you are worthy of my praise, and hallelujah, say holy, holy, God, you are worthy of my praise, say I declare this morning and I say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah No matter what it looks like Halle, Halle, Hallelujah I declare to give him this morning Halle, Halle, Hallelujah I'm declaring that I will praise him over my problems Because I praise your name I praise your name No matter what it looks like I declare Halle, Halle, Hallelujah And I will say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah you are worthy. Say Halle, Halle, Hallelujah. And I praise your name. I praise your name. I'm going to declare this morning that I will praise his name. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I face, no matter what the doctors say, I'm decreeing and declaring this morning that I will praise the name of the Lord. I will praise the name of the Lord over every diagnosis, over every situation, over every circumstance. I will bless the Lord at all times. It didn't say when things are good, it said at all times. It means that through the valley of the shadow of death, I will still trust Him. I will still depend on Him. I will still praise Him no matter what it looks like. At all times, I will bless His name. Am I by myself this morning? Hallelujah. And we set our hopes on Him this morning because He is the everlasting God. He is our light and salvation. We don't have to fear for tomorrow. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. We just got to trust and believe that he's got tomorrow in his hands. Is that all right? Let's declare this praise to the Lord together. If you're sitting in the back, I want to invite you just to come a little bit closer. Let's join in together. Come a little closer if you're in the back. But we're going to keep praising the name of our God this morning. Because we declare we recognize that he is our light and salvation. We don't have to fear. We don't have to, we don't have to worry. We can trust in him and wait on him. Because he is consistent, never failing. Come on, you can help me say it. It says, The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Say it again. Come on. Say, The Lord is my light and salvation. Oh. Whom shall I fear? Yes. Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yes. Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. Anybody gonna wait on him today? And I will wait on you. And I will trust in you. I will 
trust in you, God. I will trust in you. Oh, back to the top. The Lord is my light and salvation. Say it. Whom shall I fear? Yes. Whom shall I be afraid? Hey. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yes. Say it again. Whom shall I be afraid? Come on, help me say it. The Lord is my light and salvation. Hey. Whom shall I fear? Yes. Whom shall I wait on him I will wait on you to fix every problem I will trust I will trust in you come on say that again and I will trust in you oh I will wait I will wait on you I want you to declare that this morning if you really believe it I will wait on you Lord I will trust in you I'm gonna put my trust in you. I will trust in you. I love this part. And I will remain. I'm confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Anybody believe that this morning? I will remain. I'm confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Can we declare that right there if you really believe it? Come on. I will remain. I'm confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain, one more time, and I will remain. I'm confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Everybody clap, come on, come on, come on. Hey, we set our hopes on you, God. We set our hopes on you because you are the everlasting God. Come Raise this up, everybody. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is. God, you are the everlasting God, you are the everlasting, we set our hope on you, we set our hope on your love, we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. for a moment and tell you I will remain I'm confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord I want to take one minute and just tell you this stay right there some people believe in Buddha some people believe in Krishna some people believe in Confucius but I want you to know this morning that all their gods are dead and they've just become idols 
but we serve the one true and living God and when we set our hopes on him we know that he is not dead but he's alive and he's listening so in that moment I want you to declare right now if you could just lock in there for a moment knowing that when you're singing this you're not singing this to an idol no 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 you're not singing this to somebody that's dead you're singing this to the one true everlasting God can we raise it one more time everybody let's raise the back one more time oh set our hope on your love we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting god you are the everlasting god you are the everlasting we set our hope on you we set our hope on your love we set our hope on the one who is the everlasting god of the Lord because you are alive but not dead I believe it I will remain I'm confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord no matter what the doctors say no matter what it looks like I declare I will remain I'm confident in this I will see the goodness of the Lord I will be healed I will not die I shall live I will remain I'm confident in this I will see the Lord. Now, if you're gonna declare that, shout out with a loud voice in this house that you will remain confident that no matter what the prognosis, no matter what the diagnosis, no matter what it looks like at home, I'm gonna trust in Him. I'm gonna depend on Him, and I will see Him fulfill every promise over my life. Come on, somebody right there, open up your mouth and bless the name of the Lord. We're standing firm and strong on your word this morning. We're standing strong on your word this morning. We're standing strong on your word this morning. Oh, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I don't know why I'm saying there, but somebody's going home to a rough situation. But can you declare, I will remain. I'm confident in this. I will see. You turn my husband back. You turn my children back to you. You'll turn my life around. I will remain. I will remain. I'm confident in this. I will see the of the, I don't know why you're keeping me here, but I'm declaring right now, God, you're going to fulfill it. I will remain for somebody confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, I will remain. Hey, I'm confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. this 
things I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. Yes, I will trust in the Lord till I Stay on the battlefield. Come on, help me. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. Oh, I'm gonna stay on the battlefield until I battlefield until I till I die I encourage you this morning don't you give up don't you throw in the towel don't you give up don't you throw in the towel he's not through with you yet and as long as you still got breath in your body as long as you still, still got the movement of your limbs I want you to know there is still more for you to do you've officially been called to worship open up your mouth and shout hallelujah Hallelujah, you've officially been called to work. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm going to trust in God. Come on, look at your neighbor, just declare to your neighbor, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Not for this week, not just for tomorrow, but I'm going to trust him until I die. I was, uh, I was reading a I was reading a Facebook post and the Facebook post said uh, how do you respond when you've lost everything and God gives it back and then they say asking for a friend you know you all y'all see that how they do it on Facebook well I got a question there how do you respond when on Monday, the doctor says that he's 95% sure that it's cancer. But 24, later, 24 hours later, he comes back and he's 95% certain that it's not. Asking for a friend, that's all. I'm just asking for a friend. What do you do when the doctor said it was, but God says it's not? I just need to know how do you respond to that? I got, I got, I got another one. I got another one. I got another one. Um, I'm, I'm getting ready to, uh, I'm going to go on a tweet storm. Uh, um, how, this, I'm asking for a friend. I'm just asking for a friend. How do you respond when you get a call at 11 o'clock at night that your granddaughter has been stabbed multiple times and it has pierced her liver, pierced her heart cavity, and 24 hours later she's saying it was God? I'm just asking for a friend. I just need to know because my friend want to know what does he need to do in response to God showing up? I, 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 I know, I know, I know. I'm just asking for a friend because truth be told, some of us, some of us went through hell all week, but God was faithful. And some of us want to know how should I respond when I dealt with stuff that should have killed me, should have destroyed me, but I made it. Just slap by with somebody, tell them I made it, I made it, I made it, I made it. It looked rough for a minute, it was touch and go for a minute, but I made it. Through dangers seen and unseen. I tell you, I, I don't know about you, 
but I was I was present for some miracles on this week <laughs> y'all go ahead and sit down because I'm not we're going to get y'all out of here I just I, 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 I was present for some miracles on this week and one of the things that I am convinced of Bishop, Bishop White Kevin White is sitting in the back one of the things that I learned early on in my pastorate is that I'm not I don't want to need have to be the one who needs the miracle all I have to do is be present for the miracle and I know he can okay y'all y'all miss that see see all you have to do is be present when somebody else receives their miracle and you know he can on this week our own sister Charlotte was uh, rushed to the hospital and the doctor see sometimes you got to call you got sometimes I just need to hear from the doctor I can't you know I, 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 mean, I, don't, I can't hear all that because I, I don't I'm not understanding what you're saying because um, me as being a man of faith and a man of prayer and have I got some um, some some prayer warriors in my top five and I need to know who I need to contact and I need but I need to tell them what they need to be praying for so when sister Charlotte was rushed to the hospital I didn't quite understand the seriousness in her condition. And so I called the doctor. The doctor called me back and the doctor told me that um, she could die any minute. Now this is what the doctor told me. And I said, okay, doctor, die from what? And he told me what she could die from and I said, okay, that's all I need to know. Carry on. Immediately sent out a few texts to some prayer warriors and we began to pray and if they said the same thing and 24 hours later I got a phone call okay let me uh, and the same doctor that told me she could die any minute told me that it's all is well I know that's not I know I know it ain't hit close to your home but I know brother Willie and sister Charlotte got something to be thankful for one of the struggles and one of the challenges is when the doctor says no and you waiting on God to say yes so I was just privileged to be a part and be, be privy to the miracles and then on, on the same the next night got a phone call late at night that sister Summer's daughter had been granddaughter had been stabbed multiple times I'm sitting in my bed I'm saying I just just took my clothes off, been running all night long, tired, about 11 o'clock, I was, I was looking for somebody I could call to sin because it was all the way, about a 45 minute drive, but the Lord told me it's time for you to get up. I got two members, two members in the hospital, same hospital, both of them got a grim report. He said, this is what I called you for. He said, this ain't that. I don't need you to send nobody. I need you to get up. I got up, put my flip-flops on. I put my hat on backwards. Y'all know I wear my hat backwards. And I showed up at the hospital. And I had to find out what was the report. The little Kariah was going through surgery for hours. They wouldn't let nobody up. We sat there and waited. Finally, they let me come up. And when I went up, the doctor was out there. The doctor told me that it was very grim said but the it says that the knife severed the liver then the knife went completely through the stomach and then it looked like she had cardiac arrest so we had to cut open the cavity around the heart to make sure that she wasn't bleeding on the heart he says but she's going to pull through and then the next day this young girl who who proclaimed to be a Muslim her first word says, this was nothing but God. Elder Kim was there and, um, and I'm telling you, if, I don't know how much more we need to convince us that God is still in control. 
I don't know why we worried about what Fox News is saying, what channel MSNBC is saying, because as long as God is God, who can be against us? I tell you, I'm, I'm I tell you, I'm, uh, I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. I'm excited about what the Lord is doing. Sometimes God just, <laughs> hey, look, you have a, one thing about, one thing about the, I'm a, and we're going to get out of here. I got to preach this evening. One thing about it is that, one thing I love about the cash app is that anytime somebody feels like they want to send you something, they don't even have to ask. They just drop it in your account. And sometimes God just knows that the but people need to see a miracle. And we don't even have to ask for it. He just at, cash apps this to us. And when we look up, there it is, a, a, a miracle sitting in our account. God, I didn't even send a request for this miracle because this looks grim. This looks beyond. Uh, it looks insurmountable. I didn't even ask you for a miracle, but you just dropped one in my account. Sometimes God would just has a way of dropping miracles in your account just for you to know that he is still able. Listen, I want to welcome you here to Christian Time. I'm not going to try to believe all of us have been here. It was one time before, but on behalf of myself and my beautiful wife and to the, all of the leaders and the memberships, uh, we, we welcome you to the TAM. Amen. Amen. We welcome you to the TAM. Amen. 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 I do also... I do also would like to, for those of you all um, who, who are going with us on this evening, I need you to give your name to Brother Rufus. Amen. I'm my friend, my brother, uh, Pastor William Covington in Grace Cathedral for 12 years. They've been trusting God for their own building. And for 12 years, they didn't waver. They didn't stagger at the promise. And today is their inaugural service in their brand new facility. Amen. Amen. They asked that we would come be the first ones to help celebrate. And what's so good about it is that his brand new church is in his old neighborhood. And he's coming full circle back to where he grew up at in Sea Pleasant, Maryland. So the address is 6107. Um, C. Pleasant Drive and for those of you all that know my story you know what that means for me amen amen I, I say this I say this uh, uh, that I'm going to grace on this evening but a few years ago I was strung out and homeless at the sugar shack but both the sugar shack and grace are on the same road and sometimes people want us to believe that we're on the wrong road. No, we just have the wrong relationships. Because sometimes before you can get to grace, you got to go through your sugar shack. Amen. So I'm very thankful and honored to be able to come on this evening. Listen, we're not going to be labeled the hour. We're going to, um, um, the buses are running. Listen, um, it's offering time. It's offering time. I know we have a lot of people out today. People are getting their last last uh we actually they out of leave they 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 just leave without pay um they out of leave they don't use their leave all of august just tell them when you see them tell them it's september they out of leave um but we have a lot of people that's out today amen but i'm glad to be back i've been had opportunity to be off for the last month and i'm glad to be back be able to stand in this pulpit and preach amen to the place god has called me to preach Amen. I'm glad to see your beautiful faces. If you need an envelope, our love first technicians are here to serve you. Amen. 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 God is awesome. Amen. It's good to see your beautiful faces. God is doing some amazing things here at the tab. Amen. Amen. School is back. Amen. I'm also got a praise on my lips because my kids go back to school on Tuesday. Amen. I tell you, I'll I break out in the shout right now. Amen. 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 They go back to school on Tuesday. Amen. Listen, when you, everyone's standing, everyone's standing, we're going to get right into the brother Theo's going to come, give us a sermonic selection. We're going to go right into the word. Amen. We, we've been dealing in with pacing yourselves all year long. 
And for one half, one part of the year, we dealt with the P, which was prayer. For the last few months, we've been dealing with the A, which is authentic worship. Today, we're going to begin with the C, is commitment. Amen. Father, we thank you for these offerings. We thank you for every giver of every seed, God. We pray that every seed meets every need before every need even becomes a need. Father, we thank you for those that didn't have a tangible gift to give, God, but they had a desire to give, God. Meet them at their desires, God. Father, we thank you, God. Father, we lift you up, God, because without you, we know there is no us. In Jesus' name, amen. I love first technician. going to lead you out from the rear. Say blessed, say blessed, say blessed. Let's do it again. Come on back to the top. And everybody say blessed, blessed. I can't hear you. I say blessed, say blessed, say blessed. We're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. Say we're blessed in the city. And we're blessed in the field. Yes, we're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease before the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Everybody say bless, bless, say bless, say bless. I can't hear you. Say bless, say bless, say bless. Everybody say bless, 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 bless. Say bless, say bless. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed. Say. See, we're blessed in the field, we're blessed in the field We're blessed when we come and when we go And we cast down every stronghold Sickness and poverty must cease up For the devil is defeated We are blessed Let's declare it now Say late in the midnight hour hey, God's gonna turn it around And it's gonna work in my favor Yes, it will Everybody say yeah, 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 yeah. You sound good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, say, say yeah. Yeah, yeah. Say yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you sound good. Say yeah, yeah. city and we're blessed in the field yes we're blessed when we come and when we go and we cast down every stronghold sickness and poverty must cease for the devil is defeated we are blessed amen amen after that report pastor just gave we gotta let our worship flow to the lord today we got to let our worship flow to you today, oh God. You are so good. We're grateful for the healing. God still does miracles, y'all. I said God still does miracles, y'all. pastor just literally told us about two miracles. We, we take those things for granted because the doctor said something, but I want you to know that God already said it before the doctor said it. What God says is always complete. Flow to you.
see what uh, Mother Thornton, she made this for her pastor. She told me. <laughs> Mother Thornton, I tell you. Listen, grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles real quick. Grab your Bibles real quick. I, um, I know Brother, Brother Darius was, um, hey, I know you wanted to say something to me yesterday. I sent him my message. I usually send it to him on Friday nights or Saturday nights. And I sent him about three different messages. Because we're starting today in our series of commitment. Uh, the series is entitled The Big C. But last night when I got home, the Lord told me that I needed to deal with something that's been familiar that I've recently just um, dealt with and um, before anybody can commit this is the thing that needs to happen so I sent it to Darius last night and uh, this morning he looked at me side eye so you know, like he wanted to do something to me but thank God brother Darius listen if you have your Bibles go with me quickly to the book of Matthews Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse number 22. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. I know we've been on vacation. Some We probably haven't touched these Bibles or these iPads or these technology all summer long. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. Amen. The book of Matthew chapter 14 beginning at verse 22 amen and when you have it I say I have it if you will stand on your feet in reverence of God's word and, the, and it reads like this immediately Jesus made or constrained the disciples to get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because of the wind against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said and cried out out of fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat walked on water and came to Jesus but when he saw that the wind that he was running from was following him he began to sink and cried out Lord save me immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him you of little faith he said wherefore did you doubt and when they got back into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. But immediately Jesus said to them, take care of your desire, do not be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you walking on the water come he said then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on water toward Jesus look at your neighbor and just tell three people it's time to get out of the boat look at three people Oops. I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry oh I'm sorry I'm sorry you know this technology have glitches sometimes I'm sorry I meant to tell you that look at that same neighbor and say I'm sorry it's time to get back in the boat. It's time to get back in the boat. Truth be told, some of us have been out the boat long enough. It's time for you to get back where you're supposed to be. 
Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercies. Father, I ask God that you would hide me behind your cross so that you too, I too might marvel at your word on today. Father, give me revelation, knowledge, and clarity of speech. God, let lives be changed, hearts be fixed, and relationships be restored. This is my prayer, God. I believe it lines up with your will. So I'm confident I have that I asked of you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's time to get back in the boat. One of the struggles with commitment is being in the place of purpose. Sometimes we commit to places, people, and things that are not designed or, uh, or purpose for us to commit to. We find ourselves frustrated because we seem like the more I give to them, the more problems they give me. Maybe it's because you're committing to the wrong community. You're committing to the wrong person people or things one of the challenges with following purpose is that we don't always get an opportunity to choose it have input on it debate it or even custom it to our liking if that was so all of us would be operating or committing in our purpose the scripture in Jeremiah 29 tells us that God knows the plan or purpose he has for us that plan or purpose is not always the easy way around. Sometimes that plan and that purpose takes us right through a storm. In this pericope, it begins with a struggle. This struggle in this text was not a struggle to get the disciples out of a storm, out of a trial, out of a problem, or out of a painful situation. But this was a struggle to get them into a place that a storm was inevitable, foreseeable, or even guaranteed. The text says that Jesus constrained, coerced, convinced, or even made his disciples get into the boat and go to the other side. Now, the good thing about this is that whenever you're going through a storm for Jesus, the destination is already assured. I'm going to the other side. Now that Jesus has convinced, constrained, and coerced his disciples to get into the boat, the very thing that they feared has become their reality. The very thing that they thought they were avoiding, they were hoping to avoid, has come and sat down right beside them in their God-given purpose and their God-given plan. Okay, some of us, some of us can, can testify that we, 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 we thought and we, we, we were following your lead, God. We, were, we, we, we did what you told us to do, but the, the very thing that we thought we were going to avoid has now come in and it's annoying us. The Bible declares that there arose a storm. Even after God had to constrain them, even after he had to convince them to get into the boat. Now here is Peter's dilemma. Peter is in a place that he really doesn't want to be, but has to be because it's the only way he's going to make it to the other side. Can I pause here parenthetically to tell you, sometimes the place that we don't want to be is the place that we need to be for God to get us where he wants us to be. Okay, let me say that again. Sometimes the place that we want to be is not where we, is the place that we need to be is not where we want to be for God to get us where he wants us to be. Okay, Peter is in a boat. He doesn't want to be. What do you mean, Pastor Kevin? The reason why I know he didn't want to be because the Bible says that Jesus had to force him to get there. He had to constrain him to get into the boat. He had to coerce him. He had to convince him to get into the boat. So now he's in a place that he doesn't want to be. And now the very thing that he was trying to avoid has come and sat down right beside him. The Bible declares, then arose a storm. And Peter begins and wants out. Okay, here it is. Peter begins to plan his exit strategy. And like most of us, Peter is looking for confirmation that validates his frustration and leads to his resignation. Let me say that again. When we're in a place that we don't want to be, when we're looking for every excuse to get out of a place, to leave a job, to walk out on a marriage, to walk out on a relationship, we are looking for confirmation that validates our frustration and leads to our resignation. Here it is. After 
cleared after Jesus clearly reassures the disciples that he is not a ghost. It is Christ. So you don't have to be scared, Peter. Peter responds, if it is you. Okay, here it is. Jesus is coming. He's walking on water. And they thought he was a ghost. And God replies, Christ replies, do not be scared. It's me. Peter responds, if it is you, bid me to come walking to you on the water. Signaling that either he didn't hear, he didn't believe, or he didn't care. Okay, here it goes. In life, we have faced similar challenges as we fight for equality and justice for those who are underserved and overlooked. We kick and fight going in because we see the storms that are ahead of us. We can see the persecution that we are going to endure, not for only from those that are the obvious oppressors, but even from persecution from those, from some of those that are the oppressed because they don't even want to be free or they are benefiting from their bond. Let me say that again. Sometimes the persecution that we get are from people that we're trying to help because they are benefiting from being in bondage. Then finally, when we surrender and we submit to the assignment, we become target practice for white supremacists in political position, present day pilgrims and Puritans in public pulpits, and even preachers of color that have become complicit in the continual criminal enterprises, criminal enterprises that discriminates against people of color to an administration that removes mandates from the affordable health care, making it the unaffordable health care, to an administration that separates immigrants' babies from their parents because they are looking for a better way of life. They have become complicit in the light, in the move to extinguish our young black men by supporting legislation that adversely affects our communities of color, color at a disproportionate rate. They are complicit in their support for sentencing guidelines, redlining, and the removal of the affirmative action from the education the storms are becoming more than we can handle and Peter wants out Peter wants out because he knew this was going to happen he knew when, you, when, when he walked in purpose that, that people weren't going to like it he knew when he gave his life to Christ that folk were going to think he's smelling himself he think he's better than folk and the very people that he was trying to help were trying to destroy him Peter wants out he wants out I'm operating in purpose and now I'm getting kicked back from the people that you've called me to Peter wants out the storms are beginning to flood our personal lives our finances our marriages and our faith are being washed away by the storms of life I want out because I told you this would happen I didn't want to be here in the first place bid me come but I come to tell you today that it's time to get back in the boat and I'm gonna give you three things to show you why it's time to get back in the boat because you cannot begin to commit to something that you refuse to get back into Okay, it's time to get back in the boat. First thing, the reason why I know it's time to get back in the boat, because Jesus shows up to encourage you to stay in this ship, not to be your excuse to jump ship. Okay, y'all missed that. Okay, okay, okay. See, 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 we looking for Jesus in all these different places. We say we see Jesus down over here. We see Jesus. And when we see Jesus, we believe that that's him telling us it's okay to leave. But Jesus is showing up to encourage you to stay put and not to be your excuse to jump ship. Here it is. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. Jesus comes walking on water as Mark's gospel confirms that he had every intention of walking past his disciples. He never intended to stop. Jesus had no intention on stopping. He was going to walk past them because storms are inevitable. When you are going, when you are going somewhere, it's, it's, it's inevitable that you're going to encounter the storms of life. But now this tension in this text is suggesting me that Jesus can be seen, can see me dealing with a storm and walk right by me. Especially when the only reason why I'm dealing with this storm in the first place is because I allowed him to convince me that this was the right church to join. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, so, so the only reason why I'm dealing with this is because you told me this was going to be my wife. And I told you from the first place that I don't think she's in. But you told me that this is where you wanted me to be. And I'm dealing with this storm because you told me this is where I was supposed to be. 
I'm a bit befuddled that the same Jesus that just fed the multitude with the little boy's lunch can see me moving at a snail's pace in the slow lane because my tire is going flat or even see me on the side of the road with my hood up and smoke bellowing from my engine because I'm overheated and running hot. You mean to tell me that the Jesus can just walk, keep on walking past me like you don't even see what I'm dealing with? To be honest, we all have in life had to be punched us, have life had life to punch us in the gut and knock the wind out of us so much so that we had to move over into the slow lane until we can get to a safe place to get our second plan, second win. Jesus knew that in this walk of life, you're going to encounter some folk that's going to get underneath of your proverbial hood, under your flesh, and cause you to become overheated and start running hot. But you don't have to know. You you know you. You have to pull over and cool down. He wasn't walking past them to be antisocial or insensitive. I would suggest that he was walking past them because he knew that the destination had already been decreed. He knew that the destination had already been declared. So not even Hurricane Katrina could derail your destiny. I remember when I took my car through inspection. The mother thought, thanks. <laughs> Took my car through inspection and they failed me. They didn't fail me because I had a flat tire. They didn't fail me because my car had, my car had the tendency to run hot. No, they didn't. They, if they failed me because I had faulty windshield wipers. And that was enough to keep me off the road because it was a class A violations. Because you can keep moving with a flat tire. You can keep moving when you run hot sometimes. But if you can't see right, <laughs> you can't serve right. And if you can't see right, you can't say right. It wasn't until the storm began to affect how they saw him that he had to stop. Watch this, y'all. Y'all missed that. You missed that. Jesus had no intention of stopping until they thought he was a ghost. Good God, my. Jesus was not confirmed, concerned about their running, running on a flat tire. He was not concerned about them running hot, about them being upset, but he was concerned that they were allowing the storms to confuse them about who he was. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I, I, I tell you. Because Jesus will never leave you confused about his identity. Peter, who do you say that I am? The inclement weather is not the problem. It was their ability to identify Jesus in it. He wants you to be able to see him right in the midst of any storm you face. Jesus responds to their misidentification with a bold statement. Do not fear in his eye. No matter what I'm going through. No matter what I'm dealing with. No matter about the reins of life. As long as I can see him, I can be him. As long as I can identify him, I can come. I'm out of this storm. Jesus doesn't stop because of the storm. He stops because of your faulty windshield wipers. And you can't identify him while you're going through a storm. Okay, here it is, part two. Let me give you number two, and we're almost done. It's time to get back in the boat because sometimes Jesus will allow what you want to reaffirm what you really need, okay, <laughs> okay. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, bid me to come. If it is you, I just told you it was me, but because you're looking for confirmation that validates your frustration that leads to your resignation, you're going to keep asking me till I give you what you want. He said, okay, since you keep asking me, I just told you it was me. He says, come. And when Peter was, came down out of the boat. Watch this. So I got to, can I, can I pause here parenthetically? So you mean to tell me that Peter had to come down out of the boat? Okay. Peter had to come down out of the boat. So you mean, to, so if he had to come down out of the boat, that meant he had to go up to get in the boat. Okay. Let me say, let me, let me see if I can accept this. So in order for Peter to get down, out, come out of the boat, he had to come down. So that meant in order for Peter to get in the boat, he had to go up. 
But when he went up into the boat, it led him right in the storm. Okay, so can I say this right quick? That sometimes your elevation comes with a storm. Okay, I need y'all to understand this. Sometimes the elevation, sometimes the storms is proof that God is taking me higher. Sometimes the storm is proof that God is just elevating me to another level. Sometimes the mere fact that you're dealing with haters and naysayers and folk that don't want to see you successful and folks that the storms of life is the fact that God has just took you to another level level and the storm is a part of the promotion okay 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 here it is here it is thank God for your storm that's telling me that you just promoted me thank God for the storm that's telling me that I'm elevated thank God for the storm because that's telling me you're taking me somewhere okay here it is here it is here it is he says I want to reaffirm to you what you need Jesus responds was a simple come. Sometimes we have the tendency to believe that the grass is greener on the other side. And sometimes we will even walk on top of what others have drowned in for a little while. But the further we get away from where we are supposed to be, the greater we risk of drowning. But it comes a time when we realize that the storm we thought we had escaped follow us okay it is at that very moment that we begin to succumb to what we're supposed to conquer and it's time for us to get back in the boat let me show you this peter got out of the boat because first of all he didn't want to be there and now his wife is getting on his nerves i don't even want to be in this marriage no more and now she's getting on my nerves i don't even want to be on this job no more and the boss had just put me on a 15-day uh, probation. And Peter has a storm, and he gets out of the storm, out of the boat. And he thought he was getting away from the storm. But the Bible declares that what he thought he was walking away from followed him, okay? Because truth be told, maybe this wasn't a boat storm. Just maybe this was a Peter storm. If you, if you go and you look at other translations, it says that when Jesus began to walk back towards the boat with Peter, it said that the disciples were waving them away. Don't come back. Because what they were saying was that when he left, so did the storm. So maybe sometimes the storm that you're running from is you. Sometimes you keep wondering why the same storm keeps showing up and every location you go, because the storm is you. Ask Jonah. And, the, and, and, and truth be told, <laughs> that's why I don't get upset sometimes when I, get, I don't get upset sometimes when people leave, because the sun come out. <laughs> and when they call me and tell me God told me to come home, I'd be like, no. Because when, when you left, so did the storm. <laughs> okay, okay I'm, I'm, y'all, y'all help me out. But, but one thing, watch this, watch this. Sometimes we must understand that it's not an external storm, it's an internal storm. And the storms that are raging in our life is raging in us, not around us. And when you think you are running from a place, you're actually... You're taking whatever you thought you were running from with you. Okay, here's my last point, I'm done. But the good thing about it, Brother Willie, is that another reason why Jesus came walking on the water is because he came to help you get from where you wanted to be back to where you were supposed to be. I, 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 I couldn't get back by myself, but he came to help you get from where you wanted to be, where you thought the grass was greener on the other side, back to where you're supposed to be. Here it is. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they had come into the ship, the wind ceased. Lord, save me. Jesus stretches out his hand, not to be your codependent. Watch this. Jesus didn't stretch out his hand to become Peter's codependent, 
But the scripture says that he asked them, wherefore did thou doubt? This is important in the text. The reason why this is important in the text is because what Jesus is saying is where and why did you lose hope? And the next verse says, and when they got back in the boat. Because truth be told, we want God to calm the storms outside of purpose. We want God to calm the storms where we want to be. But if he calms the storms where you want to be, you'll never go back to where you're supposed to be. Okay, I, I tell you. That's why we want everything to be all right where we want to be. But God says, if I make everything all right in this, in this, in this, outside of your purpose, what reason do you have to get back in purpose? But he says, so Peter, I need to know where did you lose hope? He, he says, when they got back into the boat, the storm ceased. Okay, here it is. Jesus is more concerned about where you lost hope than he is about calming the storms. Because if he calms the storms outside of purpose, you'll never get back in purpose. I know I'll focus and I'll shout. Here it is in the text. I'm done, Brother Willie. And I know I done messed up this text because we, 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 um, we don't shout over this part of the text. I, 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 our shout, Brother Willie, is over Peter walking on water. And ain't that when we shout? Ain't, ain't that our shout? We've been, we've been taught to shout right there. Because yeah, that's when the organ croons up, right when he said, and Peter walked on water. Okay? Okay, that's a good shout. But that's not even Peter's shout. See, sometimes people shouting over stuff that you ain't even shouting about. Okay, people shouting over stuff. That wasn't even Peter's shout. Watch this. Let me show you in this text. We know that the, that the, that, 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 that the Gospels, they're the synoptic Gospels. And the synoptic Gospels tell the same story from different perspectives. So if you would consider all the synoptic Gospels record the same stories only from a different vantage point or perspective, then you would have to give consideration to the fact that not all the Gospels record that Peter walked on water. If they all tell in the same story, not all of the Gospels say Peter walked on water. I'm not doubting if Peter walked on water. I believe he walked on water. But I don't believe that was the major miracle in the text. That's our shout. That wasn't even Peter's shout. Watch this, Brother Willie, and I'm going to help you. Because if it was Peter's shout, and we already know that Mark was Peter's protege, and Mark's gospel was written from Peter's firsthand experience of what Mark was writing he got from Peter, then why didn't even Mark say Peter walk? Okay, let me, let me say if I walked on water, Dick Buck, me and you tight. We real, we boys. As a matter of fact, if all of us, if y'all saw me walk on water right now, and y'all had to write about it, all of y'all would write about it. Dick Butler, you my boy. If I walked on water, who the first person you think I'd tell? Your boy. Why didn't Peter tell Mark? Because maybe this wasn't the major miracle in the text for Peter. I'm going to help. I'm, 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 I'm great. No, no, watch this. Watch this. Because truth be told, Peter, Peter, what Mark does record is that when he got back in the storm, the boat, the storm, when he got back in the boat, the storm ceased. Watch this, Brother Willie. So if we would be honest and be transparent, walking on water for some of us was not the major miracle in our lives. For some of us who have known what it feels like to once be on top only to sink, the major miracle was that after we sank and after we've done all, after we walked on the water for a little while, after we began to sink and walked away from our purpose and after we walked out on our families, as we walked out of our, our ministries, the major miracle was not, that we, was not that we walked on water. The major miracle was that we made it back to the boat. Okay, y'all missed that right there. Let me say that again. So, so for some of us who've known what it feels like to be on top for a little while, for some of us that know what it feels like to have a bank, bank account and to lose it all, for some of us to know what it feels like to start a business only to see it be flipped, for some of us to know what it feels like to own a house only to have the economy to come and flip upside down and have us lose this house, for some of us, the major miracle in the text that even after I walked a little while, I made it back to the boat. I made it back to my place of purpose. 
I made it back to my place of assignment. I made it back to the ministry. I made it back to my marriage. I made it back to my job. Truth be told, I'm done, is that it's time for us to get back where we're supposed to be and stop hanging out where we want to be. You cannot begin to get back into a commitment until you get back into purpose. Peter's, and, I, and the reason why I, I wanted to preach this this morning is because I'm going to be teaching for the next four weeks on how to commit. But I want to make sure I tell you where to commit first. Because what, if some of us want to commit where we are. God has called us to something. And only you know what your call is. Only you know what your purpose is. Only you know where God had to force you to be at. And when you get back to that place, that's where God wants you to commit to. Let me say this and I'm done. But one of the challenges, and this, is, this was my challenge. Can I tell you my, my challenge? My challenge is after walking away from ministry, after relapsing, going back, being on drugs after, and everybody knew my story. It took so much courage for me to come back to the church. Oh, it, oh, it wasn't easy. I was looking, I was looking for other churches to go to because everybody knew that I had began to sing. And, to, and, and I, this is my story, but some of us know that the only reason why we won't go back to where we're supposed to be is because they know. It was I, long after I stopped wanting to get high, I stayed in the crack house because I was scared to come back to the church house. Even though I was sinking, it felt like it was safer to sink than it was to get back in a place where everybody knew you had failed. And the only way, God, I was going to get back into that boat is if you went with me. I wasn't going to let nobody else tell me it's time for you to go back to church. I wasn't going to let nobody else tell for you it's time for you to come back to church. I wasn't going to let nobody else convince me. I said, I'm not going back until Jesus goes back with me. Even though I was sinking, I was still dealing with pride. I was dealing with stuff that I just felt like I can't go back because no matter what, I, no matter what happens when I go back, they're going to know. I got to deal with the fact that they knew I had walked out on my children and walked out on my family. I had to deal with the fact that they knew that I was my, my father, what I had done to my father and done to my mother. I had to deal with the fact. He said, so I was scared. And I said, God, the only way I'm going to go back is if you go with me. And the Bible says when they got back in the boat, Jesus and Peter. And you be told, let me tell you something like this, because in order for us to commit, let me tell you something. Getting back in the boat is a major hurdle. Just coming back to a church where you've been hurt before, coming back to a place where you've been disappointed for is a major hurdle. But let me tell you what I did. I'm just talking about me. Don't get mad because I'm talking about me. Even after I got back in the boat, I still stood on the sideline because I didn't think I was worthy to get my seat back. And truth be told, there are a lot of us who are back in the boat, but we haven't taken our rightful seats yet. And truth be told, God is saying that I've got you back where you're supposed to be. I've helped you get back. I've helped you even after the doctors have declared that you had that that you weren't gonna make it. I helped you get back where you're supposed to be. Even after folk had threw in the towels on you and said you were gonna never be nothing. I helped you get back to the boat. I helped you get back. Now, why are you allowing people to relegate you to the sidelines of life? 
Don't nobody have no hell or heaven or hell to put you in. You, if you are back in the boat, you need to get back into the place that God has called you to be. Serve on the ministry that God has called you to serve. Be, do the thing that God has called you to be. Don't let nobody make you think you're not worthy to get back in your seat. I went to the grocery store one day. Stood in line, was in line for a long time. Got all the way up to the counter and realized that I forgot the bread. And what I did was I jumped out of line to go get the bread. And when I came back, I stood back in the long line again. Feel, feeling like I had to start all over again. But while I'm standing in the back of the line, feeling like I had to start all over again. Somebody at the front of the line told me I was holding your spot. And this morning, I, I, I tell you, I, this morning, this call, this prayer call this morning is for people that are back in the boat. But they, stay, they feel like they had to stand and start all over again. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what you've done in your life, as soon as you decide that you're ready to get back in the boat, you do not have to stand along the walls of life. God has a seat for you. God has a purpose for you. God has a plan for you. God has an assignment for you. And can't nobody else dictate or predicate or tell you how what the process is for you to be restored. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. He, all things are become new. You need to take your seat. If you don't think I deserve to stand up, then you need to get up and stop taking your seat. God, God is telling you it's time for you to commit but you got to be willing to skip back in your seat you know where you're supposed to be you know what you're supposed to be doing you know what you're called to do if you're called to the, to the music ministry if you're called to the worship team you need to get back in your seat rehearsal is coming up soon if you call to the love first ministry, you need to get back where you're supposed to be. If you call, if you call to the deacon ministry, but you need to get back where you're supposed to be. If you call to the men's ministry, you need to get back where you're supposed to be. Don't sit in the back till somebody comes and escorts you to the front. Ain't nobody gonna escort you to nowhere. You got to learn how to walk back to what God has called you to do. That's why I preached this message this morning. Everybody been on vacation, but it's time for you to come back and get back where you're supposed to be. Even in your marriage, even in your marriage, even in your marriage, you done messed up. You done walked away from it. Now you done come back home. Now you feel like you're less than because you know you done messed up. God is telling me it's time for you to take your rightful spot on your job. Wherever it is in your life that you walked away from, but God has called you back to, God wants you to get back in purpose. If you're here today, if you're here today and you've been feeling like, oh, I'm not worthy, oh, I, I, don't think, I don't think they're going to accept me back. No man has no heaven or hell to put you in. Because as long as you allow people to dictate your seating, you'll always be in reserve seating. My days of having reserve seating is over. My days of sitting in the overflow of life are over. My days of allowing people to relegate me to where they think I'm supposed to sit is over. And this morning, I'm telling you that if it's you today and you know where you're supposed to be, but you've been hesitating, you've been, you've been kind of contemplating, how do I get back there? This call is for you. This call is for you. Come on, what you gonna commit to this morning? It's the, it's the second day of September. What you gonna commit to? Everybody standing. What you, everybody standing? What you ready to commit to? I know what the statistics say we should be allowed to do, but what is God calling you to? This ministry needs you here. This ministry needs you here. This ministry needs you here. God needs you. 
But whatever God is calling you to, whatever God is calling you to, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. You don't have to wait. Now's the time. God is calling you to something. Even in your personal life, God is calling you something. Some of us had businesses and messed up on our businesses, and we don't think, oh, I'm, not gonna, I'm, a, I'm just going to go work for somebody else. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Do you know how many times Stephen Jobs failed before he hit, struck it rich? You do not have to believe that you got to relegate yourself to second fiddle because you missed the mark. We've all missed the mark. We've all come short and missed the mark. God is saying that it's time for you to take back your rightful spot. This is what it says. Brother Theo, let me, this is what I realized. If Peter, if Peter would have allowed people to tell him because he stepped out and sunk when he got back to the boat, if they would have relegated him to standing on the walls of life, they were missing out on an extra set of hands that they needed to get to where they were going. Because the boats operated off oil. And when he got off his seat, parts of the boat were not functioning the way it was supposed to function. When you don't operate where you're supposed to be, the boat and is not, the ship is not operating at full capacity because you're not where you're supposed to be. When you refuse to take your seat, you are not, the boat is not functioning as at the, at the maximum uh, 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 ability, capability that it needs to be because you, your seat is empty. And now we're relying on two and three people to do what you can do by yourself. Wherever you are, wherever you are, God is saying, take your seat. Get back in the boat, but also take your seat. We're going to pray. We're going to get ready for communion. I just heard the Lord say that while I'm talking, there's another voice talking in the other side. And while I'm telling you that the Lord is saying that you can take your seat, Another one is telling me, but he don't know how bad I messed up last time. So while God is saying, welcome home, another voice is telling me, telling you, they don't understand. And as long as you continue to entertain those thoughts that make you deem you not worthy, None of us worthy in here. I'm, can I, I mean, maybe because I got, I got this suit on. Let me take this neck out. Because maybe because y'all see me with all this stuff. Maybe with something covering up all my dirtiness. Man, do you know how long it took me to, to get dressed this morning so I can look like I got it all together? if some of us would tell you how much it calls us to look like this for these few hours the lines at the beauty salon at the beauty salon wrapped around the corner the, the, the hours it took us to put this makeup on to cover up the fact that we are not we don't have it all together that's what's keeping us from committing to a thing because we're scared to throw our whole self back at a thing. We'll give you a little bit of this. We'll give you a little bit of that because I'm scared to throw myself, my whole self back at it because I was hurt last time. That's why our relationships that we're in now are not working because we were hurt in a relationship before and we refuse to be hurt like that again so we don't give our all to nothing no more. The church down the street hurt us, so I'm not going to serve on no ministry. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to come. I'm going to give a little bit of offering, but I refuse to allow this church to hurt me again. 
God is saying it's time for you to throw your whole self back into something. Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you, you showed up, God, not to be our excuse to jump ship, but to be our reason that we stay in the ship. Father, we thank you, God, for allowing us, God, to test the waters and realizing that you were the best thing that ever happened to us. So, Father, as we pray for these that have come to the altar today, God, that are ready to, to make a commitment, God, they've gotten back in the boat, God. They've gotten back into their place of purpose, God. They're ready to take their seats, God. God, we pray, God, that we quiet, that, that, the, that, the, that, the, that the, the voices of, 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 of self, uh, selflessness, God, is gone, God. The, the voices, God, that are telling them that they're not worthy. The voices, God, that are telling them that they don't deserve it, God. The voices that are telling them that, 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 that it's, you gotta crawl before you can walk. My Bible doesn't even mention about anybody crawling before they walk. The Bible says, at the moment you decide you want to walk upright, you got access to the same thing that everybody else that's been walking upright all this time. God, we speak life into these, your God, be your people that have come. God, knowing that if you be for them, you're more than the whole world against them. So, Father, we thank you. Father, we, we give you glory, God. Father, we know sometimes the grass look green on the other side, God, but the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. We thank you. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise. It's offering time. Amen. Listen, our deacons, we're going to be ready for our communion. It's September. Amen. It's glad to be back. Eyes ready for communion. This week, as you go through your week, I need to need you to write down the things that you are committed to and reassess are those things that you committed to outside of the boat or inside the boat if everyone stands first technician is going to lead you out from the rear.
Father, we thank you, God, as we prepare our hearts and our mind, God, to receive this sacrament on this morning. Father, knowing, God, that this is only symbolic while significant of what you've already done. Your body was bruised for us. Your blood was shed for us. And as often as we do this, God, we do this in remembrance of you. And while they were at the table, the Bible declares that Jesus took the bread and he blessed the bread. Then he broke the bread. And he said, this is my body. Let us eat together. this is the blood of the New Testament covenant which was shed for you this same blood that flowed over 2,000 years ago is still relevant and flowing today so whatever you're standing in the need of whatever challenges you face he wants you to know that the blood never loses its power let us drink together Father, we thank you. And as we leave this place, God, we never leave your presence. And now unto him that's able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before himself with exceeding joy to the only wise God be dominion and power and majesty henceforth now and forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. You're dismissed. It's true.